we are going to go over to something very, very exciting. Please take a look at this. Do you want to make $10,000 in cash? Well, if you like magic, this could be for you. The biggest online magic competition in the entire world. I'm Max Mayer. I'm Franz Ferrari. This is Shin Lim, and I am so excited to be one of the judges on the biggest online magic competition. Where absolutely anybody can win, including you. This is Cyber Magic Superstar. The world's biggest online magic competition. Go to CyberMagicSuperstar.com. Do it now. You know, when I was a young boy, my mom took me to Blackpool Magic Convention, as she always does, and this gentleman was uh, on the gala show, and he walked onto the stage, and my mom went, oh my god, and then he cut to the microphone, and he says, boo, and my mom would not stop laughing for about 30 minutes, it was really embarrassing, and after then, uh, this gentleman became my mom's favourite, I want to say magician, but of course not a magician, because Max Maven is the most influential mentalist of a generation and he still is today. He is, in my mind, the biggest name in mentalism in all of history, in my opinion. And it is an absolute privilege to have him here on the show. We are joined by the incredible legend, Mr. Max Maven. Hello, Max. Hi there. Well, you've just given me an introduction that clearly no one can live up to. Uh, so maybe that's the end of this interview. <laughs> oh, I don't know. You have the strongest, you have the best voice um, in our business and also one of the most clearly defined characters. And uh, I find you just so inspiring. I think that um, it's so important to have character in uh, in our business. And I think that yours is unbelievable. When did your character appear, Max? How did that come about? Was it an overnight thing? No, certainly not overnight. And in fact, I don't feel like I'm done yet. It's a work in progress. Always has been, always will be. Uh, as I grow, happily enough, the character grows with me uh, so that uh, it doesn't sort of get out of sync. Uh, this is an interesting segue you've provided because in this contest that uh, we're embarking upon, uh, it is necessary for the people who are entering to establish characters uh, in a very short amount of time. And it's fascinating that some of them haven't tried at all. They are putting everything on the tricks. And in, and in some cases, the tricks are astonishingly good. Uh, and then there are others who, in a very efficient way, have managed to define themselves uh, in, in such a short time frame that that part is quite impressive as well. Are you looking for uh, personalities? Are you looking for somebody that could become a star? Uh, what, what is your... Well, I, I, speaking only for myself, because there are other judges involved, and of course everyone who watches gets to be a judge in the sense that they get to decide what they like, uh, I'm looking for the whole package. I'm looking for interesting, offbeat, clever magic, um, much of what I've seen thus far has fooled me, I'm quite happy to say. Uh, but also I'm, I'm interested in personalities. I'm interested in uh, having a sense of who this person might be beyond that, that framework of a minute or so of, of video time. I was watching the show and seeing, I was watching some of the videos coming up and seeing the incredible level. And I was thinking, wow, some people might even be frightened to enter, but they shouldn't be frightened, should they? Because you're looking at such a wide uh, arc of magic. Absolutely. There's so much uh, range involved. Uh, and it's hard to say what comes together and makes the best impact. Again, we're, we're looking at the personality. Uh, if there's language involved, how do they deliver that? Uh, is this something particularly visual? Some things are eye-poppingly visual, but, but is it more of a conceptual thing? Uh, in, in many ways, uh, each video is by itself. You have to sort of judge it on its own terms and then assess how does that compare to the way other videos made you feel. 
so it, as part of the competition rules, they're looking for people to not use any uh, camera trickery, or certainly that's going to be frowned upon. And uh, that leads me to, uh, in your business, there's now a lot of uh, mentalists that use a lot of electronics. And I wanted to ask you what your opinion was on that. And if you think it's a valid thing, if you think it's a move forward, or if it's something that you think should be analog and real. Well, <clears throat> that's an interesting question. Um, I don't have a, a sort of universal opinion. In other words, I don't say this is good, this is bad. Uh, <clears throat> rather, I think it's personalized. So something may be good for you. Uh, whether or not it's also good for me remains to be seen. In my own work, and part of this has to do with my age and what was going on when I came up into the business and learned how uh, to be a mentalist and started creating my own work. And uh, in those days, electronic gizmos were not an option. Uh, so I, I didn't start thinking that way. And now there are all sorts of extraordinary electronic gizmos that many people use. And I've seen some very good results. Uh, it's not something I choose to do, but that's me. I, I, I wouldn't automatically uh, reject the idea. I think sometimes the gizmos uh, become crutches. Uh, where where a person will use uh, a device uh, as a way of not having to work on actual performance. So I think in a way it's a little bit uh, dangerous to to put too much uh, uh, weight onto onto that. Um, but those are my personal uh, uh, approaches, and and I'm certainly open to seeing others who work differently. Wow. Do you, you know, I think I see a lot of these performers with the electronics and I think that they think it gives them some kind of edge. But having watched you live as many times as I have, I can say that's absolutely not the case. It's all down to the performer uh, and the personality. And I think that you give the impression that you can do it for real. Well, what is your view on that, Max? Do you like to do you think it's a good thing that people create the impression they can actually do it? Or do you think it's better just to be entertainment? Do you have a, a strong opinion on this? I don't have a strong opinion. I only know what, what works for me. And what works for me is I don't really claim very much. Mostly I just go out and do what I do. And hopefully the audience finds it both mysterious and engaging. And they come away feeling that they've experienced something new and different as far as their own lives. Um, and, and how they choose to interpret that uh, is no longer something I care about. I used to. I used to feel that I needed to have at least that question mark. You know, is it real? Maybe it's real. And these days, it's sort of like, well, how do you find real? Some of the things I've <laughs> seen you do are hard. Some of the things I've watched you do, I, I feel like uh, it is real. I think maybe you do have something. <laughs> it's well, really, really incredible. Um, what it do you really, think? It really comes down to uh, what does your mother think? Yes, absolutely. Well, my mom was a big believer in you. I can tell you that. And before That's before nice. we wrap this up and just uh, hit back on the uh, the competition, Max, what do you think yeah. is the future of mentalism? Well. If I knew exactly what the future of mentalism was, I'd be doing it, wouldn't I? Um, I think ultimately mentalism is a means of expression, uh, as is any kind of magic when, pro when approached artistically. It is the, the aesthetic exploration of mystery. That's the most succinct description I've ever been able to come up with. And in the case of mentalism, that mystery is not about uh, physical objects. It's not about producing flowers and doves or making balls multiply or change places, uh, all of which is grand, but it's just not what mentalism is. Mentalism has to do with uh, creating mystery involving ideas, uh, involving uh, what is a secret thought and what happens when that thought is no longer secret. Wow. It's, uh, it's fascinating talking to you, Max. It really is. Uh, your insight, and I can certainly see why uh, you're judging this competition. Um, there will be a lot of uh, viewing and assessing. Uh, I'm very pleased. The, the other two judges are, are friends of mine, uh, who, who you know, uh, Franz Harari, who I've known for ages, and Shin Lim, who is a, a bit younger and newer, but has certainly 
established his existence uh, in this world in a very powerful way, uh, partly through his own work in contests. So I think we have three very different people uh, who are looking at these, uh, the, these, these video clips uh, with rather different perspectives. And I think when everything is compared and put together, the results are going to be really interesting. Oh, I think so. And it, it may be a star will be born from this. You, you never know. It's going to be one of the most happens. exciting things. And you've, you've got to tune in. Everybody that's watching this, you have to go across. We're putting the link continually in the comments below this video. As we are live, we want you to, we want you to go and check this out. As soon as our show is over, if you're just a fan of magic, check it out. We need your help to share these videos. And if you're a magician, you can win $10,000. You have to be a part of this. It's the biggest competition of its kind. Um, Max, I really want to thank you for taking some time with us today. It's, uh, it means a lot to us to come on to our little show. And um, you are certainly a, a big inspiration to me and all these young magicians out there who are going to hopefully become the next cyber star of magic, we hope. So, Max, thank you so much for coming on the show. I really, really it's appreciate it. It's been my it. pleasure. And I look forward to, uh, with you, seeing where this all goes. Oh, it's going to be very exciting. Ladies and gentlemen, let's have a huge cyber reaction for the incredible legend, Mr. Max Maven. Thank you, Max. <laughs>